Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to dive into the future of diabetes and obesity management and talk about some of the fantastic molecules which are in the pipeline. So let's sit back and have a look what's going to come in future for diabetes and obesity management. Three of the molecules that I would like to highlight today are retatrotride, conventionally known as triple G, semaglutide and cagrilinitide combination conventionally known as Cagricema and Orphogliprone. We're going to break down their clinical trials and their results, their efficacy and their safety and also what to expect in near future. Please bear in mind that none of these medications are yet in the market because they're still awaiting FDA approval and some of them have not actually completed their phase 3 trials. So if anyone is selling them online, they are likely to be selling you some fake molecules. So health and safety comes first and therefore this is a disclaimer to make sure you're not taking the wrong information to start looking for these molecules because they are yet to be made available in the market after the approvals from FDA. In a 48-week study of retrotrotide phase 2 trial involving around 300 participants, it was impressive to see that the participants on the highest dose of retrotrotide achieved around 24% of weight loss. The impressive thing was that the weight loss was still ongoing while the trial was discontinued, meaning that further weight loss would have been possible. And that's why retrotrotide has achieved such significant degree of spotlight. But again, having said that, if you look at the official website of Eli Lilly, you can see that the phase 3 trials are still ongoing and the final recruitment of phase 3 trial would be completed in May 2026, meaning that there is still some time for these drugs to become available in the market after the FDA approval. Next in line is semaglutide and cagrilinitide combination, conventionally known as cagrithema. This has actually completed the phase 3 trial which has just been published this month and it has shown impressive results for both obesity and diabetes management. The trial has been conducted on around 3,400 participants spanning over a period of 68 weeks and it has included both patients with diabetes and without diabetes and just obesity. The results for both scenarios are very impressive as we have seen diabetes going into remission. At the end of the study, the highest dose of Cagricema was able to achieve 20.4% weight loss in its participants. And the patients who were involved from the diabetes perspective were actually those who had poorly controlled diabetes with, with HbA1c ranging between 7 and 9 percent and they were able to put their diabetes in remission meaning that the HbA1c dropped down to a level below 6.5 percent for about 73 percent of participants on the study which was specifically looking at diabetes management meaning that not a surprise if semaglutide is combined with cagrilinitide it becomes a much more powerful molecule able to achieve not only weight loss but also remission of diabetes as one would have expected the third one in the line is orphogliprone what's the difference of orphogliprone in comparison to the other molecules now the other molecules in the glp1 class have so far been the peptide molecules which have always had a difficulty in absorption if they are taken orally and if they are being available in form of a liquid formula like in an injection there is a question about the duration of usage of that because the peptide molecules get denatured over time and the efficacy can be lost Cagrilinitide is amylin which is slightly different and it is actually able to work on our appetite centers in the brain and also slow down the stomach which has been combined with semaglutide but that is still coming as an injectable option. Now orphogliprin is coming as an oral option and it is a non-peptide molecule which is able to activate the GLP-1 which is quite a promising mechanism. The only GLP-1 that's available to us for actual activation of the GLP-1 receptors orally is is semaglutide which is coming by the brand name of Rebelsis. Its absorption in the stomach is also quite challenging because the peptide molecules get degraded therefore specific instructions are provided for oral semaglutide which means that you have to use it on empty stomach with only a sip of water and allow 30 minutes before you eat or drink anything else otherwise the molecule may not be properly absorbed. When it comes to orphogliprin the dietary restrictions are not there which is quite a promising thing that you can easily take this uh, medication without getting worried about its proper absorption. 
The trial which has been done with this molecule has targeted the diabetes population at an early stage of onset of disease, meaning that the HPO1C has not deteriorated or declined significantly. It was only hovering between 7 and 8 percent while the intervention was done with the idea to put diabetes in remission. So you may argue that in future this molecule might be similar to metformin to have an early intervention in pre-diabetes stage and put diabetes back in remission. So the idea was that what is the impact of this molecule on the HbA1c uh, as opposed to the impact on the weight and hence the trial population was mainly selected for this particular purpose. And the primary outcome was to have a look at the HbA1c drop below 6.5% and no surprise around 62% of subjects in the trial population were able to achieve remission of their diabetes getting their HbA1c below 6.5% which was quite impressive. There was wide weight loss of around 7.6% from baseline which was not unreasonable but not as significant as the other two potent molecules that we have discussed. Now it's not about weight loss alone, it's also about the safety and tolerability of these molecules. We're not surprised that majority of the side effects were related to the gastrointestinal system like nausea, vomiting or diarrhea as one would have expected with the GLP-1 class. However, the discontinuation rate was not massive. The major number of participants discontinuing the therapy after usage of these molecules were belonging to the retrotrite group as one would have expected due to its potency and around 16% patients had to discontinue the therapy for that reason. Whereas 8.4% on Kegresima and 7.4% on Orphogliprone discontinued the drug due to the GI side effects. In summary, each of these drugs represents a major step forward in the fight against diabetes and obesity. Retrotrodite shows unmatched weight loss efficacy. Cagrilinitide semaglutide combination offers a powerful combination for diabetes and obesity management, putting diabetes in remission, whereas orphogliprone provides a promising oral alternative. The choice among them may come down to balance between weight loss goals and personal preferences for administration. We know that one size doesn't fit all. Our patients do hit a plateau after using these medications for a period of time. So having a variety of options is always very promising and it is absolutely fabulous to know that some of these molecules are showing promising results at early stages of their phase two and phase three trials. We are still looking forward for their approval processes to happen. Please bear in mind they're not yet available in the market. So anyone selling these molecules online is actually not doing the right thing and they're selling you something which could be hazardous to your health. Please stay safe and watch out for more updates on medicine, diabetes and obesity. So subscribe to the channel and add your comments. Thank you.